state depends heavily upon travel, especially on highway travel. So the highways must be kept open at all times and snow removal is given a high priority. Snow removal requirements vary considerably across the state and the Department of Highways tries to keep all the snow from the travel portions of the roadway. The policy of the department is to maintain all state highways as near to normal driving conditions as our resources and personnel can provide under given weather conditions. The unwritten policy of the department is, when the first snowflake hits the ground, make sure the second one is in the back of the truck. Before the snow season arrives, the road has to be properly prepared. All shoulders must be flush with the pavement and sloping outward. Rocks and slides are removed from side ditches so they won't interfere with plowing, and there is a final mowing or cutting of all growth that encourages the formation of snowdrifts on the roadway. Extended posts are installed in areas known to receive deep snow so the operators of snow removal equipment can locate the traveled portions of the road when it's covered with snow. Snow fences are installed in areas where needed. In flat open country, for instance, they are placed about 125 feet to the windward side of the roadway's center line. This distance will vary with topography and of course with wind currents. All snow fences are repaired and erected before the ground freezes. When installed, they are as taut as possible with the pickets on the windward side of the posts. The purpose of snow fences is to break up the wind currents and prevent drifting across the road. The department's trucks are quickly converted to snow plows by attaching a blade and sander. Different methods of installation are probably used throughout the state, but this is the way District 1 in Aurora does it. The truck is driven over the blade and the cable is placed on the hydraulic ram. The blade is then moved hydraulically to line up the holes in the frame of the truck and the ends of the blade. A pin is inserted into the hole. And is secured with a bolt and nut to hold it in place. The sander is lifted by a front end loader and placed in proper position for the insertion of pins. couplings are cleaned and the hoses are connected. The truck is now ready for use as a plow. The procedure takes about 10 minutes. Snow removal of course begins as soon as the storm begins and goes on until all routes have been cleared and are in good winter travel conditions. When a storm moves in, here are the priorities. First, attempt to check all stranded vehicles and remove occupants. Second, open all blocked routes as soon and as safely as possible. Third, clear all school bus and mail routes as soon as practical. Fourth, remove as much snow as possible from the high side of super elevations or gore areas that could cause icy spots due to melting and freezing. And finally, Obtain as much width as possible. Widening is essential for storage of snow removed from the roadway after successive snowfalls. It is not complete until the snow has been removed or pushed back. 
In some cases, widening may require complete removal. Every effort is made to open all state highways as soon as practical after a snowstorm. This will include the use of contractor equipment when needed. Roads will be closed when it's apparent to the department supervisor for the affected area that the roadway will become impassable due to limited visibility, drifting snow, avalanches, accidents, or stranded vehicles. Removal of snow and ice from the roadway is an emergency operation, and it takes precedence over all other work. This means that the roadway must be cleared and widened out as quickly as possible, even though it involves working extra hours, nights, Sundays, or legal holidays. As soon as the snow starts flying, the equipment goes into operation. With the start of the storm, the first thing to be done is plowing of the road. The state of Colorado has what is known as a bare road policy. This means that during the snow removal operation, snow will be removed down to the bare road. To accomplish this, the blades must be riding on the road surface, and the snow is moved off the traveled portion onto the shoulders. When equipment is plowing on interstate roads, one plow works the snow in the right lane to the right shoulder, and a second plow works the snow in the left lane to the left toward the median. When two trucks are plowing together, a minimum distance of at least 500 feet should be maintained between them. If only one plow is available, two passes are needed, once for the right lane and once for the left. Very seldom does the snowplow operator have the opportunity to remove snow without the presence of other traffic. When working on the highways, snowplow drivers must realize that the laws which apply to all vehicles also apply to them. They cannot occupy both lanes, cross the center lines, or work against the traffic. On two-way roads, great care must be exercised when meeting vehicles to prevent covering their windshield with a blanket of snow or throwing chunks of ice or frozen snow against them. The same precautions are necessary in many cases on one-way multi-lane roads. Anytime a plow is in operation, there is the possibility of it jumping into a lane other than the one it's working in. This sometimes happens when the blade encounters drifts or areas of hard snowpack or ice. If the blade is working snow from left to right, the plow could jump to the left. If working snow from right to left, it could go to the right. The possibility of this movement is greater with lighter plows, of course, than it is with the heavier units. After the travel lanes are cleared, work begins on the shoulders. It's essential to remove snow from the shoulders in order that the shoulder and the subgrade may not be softened by infiltration of snow water. This is of primary importance on the shoulders of oiled roads. Removal of snow from the shoulders also involves the opening of cuts through the snow windrow in order that snow melt may be quickly drained off. Drainage openings and waterways must also be opened and put into operating condition. Parked, disabled, and abandoned vehicles always present a problem to snow removal crews. All vehicles are checked for occupants at the start of the storm. However, some vehicles are abandoned when the plow is working elsewhere. If the location and the position of the vehicle is such that it poses no immediate problem to the snow removal crew, it is left to allow the owner time to get it out. After the travel portion is clear and the plows start widening the road, the vehicle may be in the way. If it is interfering with snow removal operations, the state patrol is notified and the officer in the area can have it towed away at the owner's expense. In some cases, the officer may not be available, so authority to remove the vehicle may be granted by the radio dispatcher. Only those vehicles abandoned in the traveled portion of the roadway may be removed. Another problem snow removal crews have is people in a hurry. It is impossible for traffic to move as quickly and safely during a storm as it does on a dry road during clear weather. 
usually a predictable pattern is established. Traffic will build up behind the plow, causing some of the drivers to become impatient. They work their way forward until they can get to a spot to tailgate the plow. After tailgating a while, they accept the challenge of a possible collision with the plow blade and make their pass. When the remaining drivers see them pass, they assume it's safe to do so, so they also pass. Now, if they pass safely, the driver doesn't have to worry about being tailgated or being involved in an accident with them if his blade hits hard pack and moves him into them while they're passing. Now, it's just a matter of minutes or miles until the next predictable happening occurs. One of the drivers in a hurry or one of the vehicles with inadequate tires or a person without the proper experience will spin out, causing all traffic to stop. Invariably, someone will try to drive around the stall vehicles, get stuck, and block the entire road. When this happens, the show begins. Vehicles approaching from behind sometimes run into the stall cars. Those that are stuck try to get going and slide downgrade into other stuck vehicles. This continues until the plow catches up to them and spreads sand. This is no easy job as the road is now plugged with vehicles which try to get into every possible opening. It's the policy of the department to sand bad curves and hills and the use of additional sanding is left to the discretion of the plow driver. If by chance the operator of the sanding unit happens to throw sand into the side of a disabled vehicle, the owner may become upset and claim damages to his vehicle. This whole problem could be alleviated if motor stayed well behind the snow plow at a safe distance and drove on the freshly plowed road. Operating a snowplow is not an impossible job. We have members with more than 10 years of experience who have never had a chargeable accident. Here are some helpful tips from one of those outstanding drivers. Before actually beginning to plow, the entire assembly should be checked to see that it's in operative condition. Any faults that are found should be noted and steps should be taken as soon as possible to make required repairs. Check over the entire plow. Look for cracks in the metal, loose bolts and rivets. See that it's properly lubricated. Check the cutting edge bolts and tighten all loose bolts. Replace all that are missing, of course. Check cutting edge condition. On the hydraulic system, check the fluid level, the operation of the rams, and check for leaks or poor hoses. Also check the system for leaks after the engine has warmed up. One of the requirements for safe, effective snowplow operation is to have your equipment in top shape. Successful snow removal depends upon your knowledge of your patrol and by having it ready for the winter months. An ample supply of sand mixed with salt to keep the pile from freezing must be ready. The equipment must be ready. And keep in mind that the amber lights must be in operation when the blade is mounted. Without the blade, the lights are on only when the truck is stopped. When the storm hits, stick with it on a constant basis. Don't make a fast pass over the patrol and head for the barn and a cup of coffee. You must stay with it. Trucks you operate are classified as light, two and a half to three and a half tons, or heavy, five to seven tons. And when either is used, 
you must be a defensive driver at all times. The guy right there did. Yeah. We're sloopy. I can't believe it didn't pass on the right like that. You must be constantly attentive and maintain control of that truck. When you're being tailgated, slow down and encourage the tailgater to pass. When traffic piles up behind you, pull off at a wide spot to let those who want to pass do so. When being passed, maintain your speed and position unless a problem arises. Then yield to the passing vehicle as Colorado law requires. Try to maintain at least a four second interval between your plow and the traffic ahead. There will be many occasions when you will need that extra space. When overtaking stopped cars, be careful. Slow down and watch for occupants getting out when they see you approaching. The usual speed to travel under normal storm conditions is 30 miles per hour. Of course, that depends entirely on the severity of the storm. Remember, too, that the distance the sand is thrown depends upon the speed of the truck. Sand dropped at high speed can damage cars in the area. Without a doubt, the most dangerous situation is being caught in a whiteout. You can't see. That emphasizes the need for safe following distances and the observation of traffic as far ahead as possible. It's a tough job, but it's got to be done. It's being done safely and effectively by many of our people, and there is no logical reason why you can't become a top-notch plow operator by keeping this program in mind. The job could be improved by more public education on the problems they create, Hopefully, this program will help there, too. What really separates the good plow drivers from the bad is safety and courtesy. We've stressed safety all through this program. As for courtesy, keep in mind that if it weren't for the traveling public, we wouldn't need a snow removal program. <laughs>